Sim Gamers, we're back with another posting for Sailwind, which is available on Steam on Early Access. And today we're covering new features, balance changes, and a bunch of bug fixes. I'm not going to go into detail on the bug fixes, but all the information is up here on the screen and also available from the link in the description below to the Steam page. I wanted to go over some of these features and balance changes that I wanted to highlight, hopefully, in this video. Uh, so let's take a look at some of those right now. Uh, they added a new island. Missions from the capital cities are available at the highest reputation level, which means you can get missions from the capitals to this new island. Um, sail physics have been improved, which means sails will now apply a rotating force on the boat in a realistic way. This is great. I've been testing this in the beta versions and uh, getting out of certain jams or certain positions is a little bit easier if you know how to um, use your front or back sails to kind of get extra turning force going on. Uh, as you shift around the boat, your weight actually has an impact on how the ship handles. That's really, really cool when you're running in a, a gale and you just want to just let your, let your boat buck. Um, and not have to worry about reefing the sails as much. You can counterbalance by leaning off the side of the boat. That's pretty cool. There's now a short delay before you can pick up furniture and cargo. The, this means that small items that are placed on top, obviously you can pick those up right away and you're less likely to do that super frustrating thing that we've all hated for a long time, which is pick up the table instead of the flask of water you meant to drink. So you can press the sprint key to override this. So do keep that in mind. If your sprint key is pressed, you'll still just yeet the table or whatever it is and cause chaos. So you generally don't need to sprint around your boat anyway. So that's not a problem. They added a chronometer and navigation manual. The chronometer is a cheaper alternative to the chrono compass for de determining your latitude. Um, obviously the chronometer cannot be used by itself. You would use it in conjunction with another tool like the, um, the the sun compass would work or um actually you could just do it with your regular compass but it, your your estimates would be a little bit approximate because you wait until the sun apparently is at noon and then take a look at the chron chronometer to find out what time it is run a conversion which i want to make a video about that some other time but you run the conversion and then based on that you can figure out what your longitude is uh, and they also have a navigation manual available in capital cities to help you learn how to navigate a big one is missions to oasis are now available finally there was so little reason to go to oasis there are a lot of reasons to stop there and come back but um, now that missions are available going to oasis people in that starting area that want to venture a little further out away from the islands to get some bigger payouts can now do that as well as missions from gold rock city to happy bay those are also available as well then we're on into balance changes. They basically rebalanced sailing uh, overall, the handling of all boats uh, due to the new sail of physics. In, uh, in general, you can expect more healing and strong winds, so you'll need to be careful about reefing your sails or counterbalancing with the weight of your body, as we talked about earlier. Um, the frequency of storms have been reduced. Uh, the frequency of storms has been reduced. Blah, 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 talking is hard. And winds should now change a bit more often in Al Ankh and Emerald Archipelago so that prevailing winds should now be slightly less prevailing. Um, I remember one of my ocean journeys, like as soon as I got over to the Emerald, Emerald Archipelago, the wind was coming directly out of the east and would not budge. And I had to tack upwind all the whole way for like five days. It was gross. But hopefully that prevailing wind shift will help with that. In the economy front, there are various goals for rewards for missions have been adjusted. The purchase price for trade goods will now always be slightly higher than their sell price at a particular location. So gone are the days, unfortunately, of of gaming the system and moneying up by buying the expensive, you know, using your discount to buy an expensive crate of grain and then selling it right back for a profit. So you've also reduced the uh, retail dis discount from reputation um, from 50% to 25% at max reputation. So just some economy adjustments there because of the introduction of the chronometer the chronic compass is now more expensive so it's a much more of you know it's at your end game device once you get that you can pretty much use it as your one-stop shop for your compass your chronometer latitude longitude navigation um you don't really need any other tool unless you want to do sightings at different times around the day because the chronic compass only works at noon basically whereas the um, 
the angle finder thingy will work anytime at night. And then there were a bunch of bug fixes, which I'm not going to go over here, but the list is up on the screen and the link is available in the description below. So <clears throat> we're going to get into taking a look at some of these different things in the game. All right, everybody, we are back in the game of Sailwind here. Let's take a look at some of the stuff that's available to add a new island. So let's see. Uh, it doesn't seem to be on this big map. Yeah, the new island is apparently not on the ocean map. I'm curious to know where it is. I'm not going to be able to find out because I don't have my reputation high enough yet on this particular save, but that's okay. The other thing that they added um, available in the markets is this here navigation guide, Boop. which walks through all of the stuff. So it talks about the compass, North Star. Oh, very nice. This is very nice being able to have this right in the game. Here's the Northern Star. Here's how you find it. Boop. Easy. Let's just read through this. Compass, the most basic navigation instrument. The compass rotates to align with the coordinal directions of the world, north, south, east, and west. You can also use the sun to find the cardinal directions. The sun always rises exactly in the east, sets exactly in the west, and reaches its higher point in the sky, the local noon, exactly in the south. That's going to come in handy later. <clears throat> The North Star. The North Star is located exactly north at a fixed point in the sky. Well, almost fixed. It does rotate around a point a little bit. I saw in a time lapse, but it's, it's close enough where like it's not going to give you any misreadings no matter when you read it. So uh, it is useful not only for finding the north direction, but also your current latitude, how far north or south you are. The angle between the North Star and the horizon is your current latitude. Hey, that's pretty handy. Unlike the sun, the North Star stays at the same angle throughout the night, so you can measure your latitude at any time. North Star stays at a fixed point in the sky while other stars rotate around it. I think it's great that they show this both these images. There it is, a bigger picture of the North Star for you. And the Quadrant. The Quadrant is a simple device for measuring angles between celestial bodies and the horizon. Point the, quadrant, uh, point the Quadrant at an object in the sky. God dang. Point the, qua <laughs> point the Quadrant at an object in the sky while holding it parallel with your line of sight. Once aligned, activate the item to lock the indicator in place and observe the measured angle. If you measure the North Star this way, your angle will be equal to your current latitude, your north-south, you know, latitude. You can also measure the sun at noon and subtract the reading from 90 degrees to find your latitude. Point at the quadrant and the North Star to get a reading from latitude 31. Yep. <clears throat> so we can actually buy a quadrant and take a look at that. And they go over the sun compass. The sun compass can be used to determine your current latitude, north-south, by measuring the length of the shadow cast by the sun. Keep the compass level and wait until it stops rotating. The shadow of the needle on the face of the compass will point to your current latitude. Sun compass indicated latitude 31. Now, we noticed in in practice, the sun compass is actually only ac like really accurate at noon because the, the tip of that shadow actually follows an arc, a slight arc. So you want to make sure that you're measuring this at, at as close to noon as possible to get the most accurate reading. The chronometer, or the chronometer, depending on how you want to pronounce it. The chronometer is a precise clock calibrated to tell the sun time at latitude zero. In other words, Astrin time. By comparing the clock time with your observed local time, you can determine your current longitude. That's how far east or west you've gone. At local noon, when the sun is directly south, check the clock time on your chronometer. Every four minutes of difference between the clock time and local noon time are equal to one degree of latitude. It's great that they have that information right in here. Dirt simple to use and learn. And I'll be making a video all about this at another time. For example, if the chronometer reads 1156 at local noon, your longitude is one. Um, so, 
Okay, <clears throat> so this helps us out. Uh, clock time of 12.22 at local noon, indicating longitude of negative 5.5. Okay, so it's inverted. If you are <clears throat> reading um, any readings before noon are to the east, so positive integers on the lo longitude, any readings after noon are to the west, so negative integers on the longitude. And this has to be a little bit precise and it has to be in order for longitude to work, you do have to combine it with another instrument. You have to combine it with like the sun compass or a regular compass, which would be a little bit less precise to find out where local noon is. But <clears throat> as long as the sun is directly south, that's local noon. Then you come over here, take a look at the chronometer and that tells you, boom, here's your longitude. So we'll buy one of those and check it out in action. The Chrono Compass, which I might not be able to afford on this save anymore. You can use the Chrono Compass on a sunny day to determine both your latitude and longitude. And I have a whole video about how to use this thing, including how to combine it with other tools to get more functionality out of it. So the link for that video is in the description below. First, adjust the angle of the of the Nomon. Ooh, I need to uh, I need to redo my video to use these official terms first. Adjust the angle of the gnomon until the tip of its shadow touches the hor horizontal bar's shadow. Yep. When correctly adjusted, the dial at the bottom will point to your latitude. So he's actually showing it like <laughs> the way I was showing it in my video, which is to be facing south. All of the numbers all turned around. Maybe I'll redo that video so you're facing north and you can just read the information. Anyway, when correctly adjusted, the dial at the bottom will point to your latitude. The shadow on the face clock will point to your longitude. And each of those little ticks to the left and the right of that center, the large line, each of those ticks is five degrees. So, um, yeah, so when, I mean, there isn't actually very much variability between the two when you're actually measuring your longitude, but it's a very precise way to get your longitude at noon every single day. This is basically your end game device because it combines all these functions into one. And that's it for the uh, navigation guide. Cool, Let's put that away. I own one now, let's buy a, um, a sun compass for 240 gold, sure. Actually, I'm gonna buy a lot of stuff. And one of these. Oh, wait a second. <gasps> no way. Yes, he added it. I put feedback in on that in the uh, in the Discord. When I la uh, literally yesterday when I was playing this, you 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 were just stuck either holding this or dropping it to the ground or trying to set it up vertically or something on a surface, but now it can be mounted on your ship. That is so amazing. So this is the chronometer right here. We can open it up. We can look at it from different angles, but that's it. You know, I don't know why you'd open it up necessarily. There's no in-game purpose to do so, but can I, I can mount it on my wall. Look at that. I've got a chronometer right there, right, right there. So now I can just be sailing on boop. What time is it? Okay. Boop. What time is it? So every four minutes on this thing equates to one degree of latitude when you're making that reading. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm not going to be able to use this right now, but we can at least take a look at the other devices. Um, so in, in conjunction with the sun compass, if this was at noon, I could take a look at the sun compass and I wonder if I have plenty of food and stuff. I should just sleep over. You can see how the shadow isn't even on the compass right now, but this at least I can turn around and I can very clearly see what my latitude would be if that reading comes across. Maybe maybe the developer just changed it so it's constantly across the middle. I don't know. Sounds like cheating if he did, but that's okay. He's a developer. He can cheat if he wants to. Um, the other thing that they talked about is short delay before picking stuff up. So as I'm walking around, right, I can immediately pick up my drink 
and drop it. Immediately pick up my, my glass and drop it. But I can't interact with this until it hovers for a little bit. So I can't... No longer can I click and accidentally pick up my table when I'm trying to interact with small things, especially in rough seas. It was really frustrating when that would happen. But now I have to wait for just a little bit to interact with table and cargo. But small items like lanterns and stuff that you're commonly interacting with, those will still, and even this lantern hook, this should also be, in my opinion, there should be a delay on the lantern hook as well. Wall mounted chronometer. Best suggestion I've, I don't know if I was the only one who suggested it or not, but I'm gonna take credit for it. I suggested it and the dev did it, very responsive. Excellent stuff. I can't open it up for no reason. Um, so here's that other tool. You can rotate it around. Now, here's what's interesting. You can rotate it this way. If I hold Q, no. Oh, that's neat. <clears throat> oh, okay. This is something I didn't know. If I have, like, it rotated way out of whack, hold down Q and then tap the or move the mouse wheel and it gets right back to the correct alignment. So like, you know, maybe, maybe you, you were, you took a sighting on something, you took a look at the thing, you turn it a little bit so you can see the number better and then you switch back, right? It's all skewed. So you want to fix it, hold down Q, tap the rotate button, boom, fixed. One of the things that uh, makes this instrument a whole lot easier to use is if you actually go into your settings, and by the way, key bindings are now customizable. So I think they fixed. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and change your crosshair opacity to the, to, to the minimum value. That way you still have a little crosshair, but it's much easier to sight stuff in these devices. <clears throat> what else? Sails apply rotating force. Yeah, we know about that. Um, a player's weight now affects the boat center of mass. Now, before, check this out. Look. I can actually get on here and rock the boat just by moving back and forth. That wasn't the case before. And that's really handy when you have the, your wind blowing across the bow. You've got the, uh, in it's maybe the slightly strong wind, a little bit high waves, and uh, you just want to keep on trucking. You don't want to slow down. So if the wind was blowing across from uh, from starboard to port, for example, that would be from right to left, um, <clears throat> my, my ship would tend to lean this direction and potentially begin taking on water, right? Well, I can counter that now just by letting that sail do the thing, come over here, maybe shift some cargo weight as well, and uh, just keep on sailing. What else in these patch notes that I want to demo here? Um, <clears throat> missions available to Oasis. I've already done one set of missions. That's the one that I starved to death on. Actually, I didn't or passed out from starvation and had to pay the recovery fee and lost all my gear. But now if we look, we've got eventually somewhere in here, somewhere, maybe there we go. Stuff going to Oasis. So this will challenge your navigation a little bit without requiring you to go into the open ocean and brave like crossing 10 degrees of latitude to get to the Emerald, Emerald Archipelago. But generally speaking, you're going to lose sight of Gold Rock City right about the time you can gain sight of Oasis. Um, so this means fairly closely tracking this longitude line. Therefore, having a sun compass and chronometer becomes useful because you don't want to stray off course too much or you'll miss Oasis. You know, basically you should def defin definitely be able to see Oasis by 33 degrees latitude and just maintain negative five degrees longitude. If you're accurately measuring and finding that and you're not seeing Oasis, you're, you're doing your navigation wrong. So now we know it's four degrees per, um, or four minutes per degree on the chronometer, which means that if I wanted to measure for Oasis, let me find my lantern. It's getting a little dark around here. If I wanted to find, if, you know, if it, supposing it was noon, 
and I want to make sure I was on negative five, I would be expecting my clock hand to be at 1220 when this compass indicates the sun is directly to the south. The shadow would pass across and be uh, the tip of it will be right in this middle line. Then I just come over here, take a look at the clock, verify my time, and that gives me, you know, do the quick math, and that does me, does me the longitude. And that'll give me information. Yeah, that just gives me that, that navigation information. Again, I'm going to be doing a navigator's guide to sailwind for all of these instruments. Not only how the instruments themselves can be used by themselves, but also how you can combine instruments together to get more information, right? The manual doesn't cover any of the stars that the community has named that can be used for longitude navigation throughout various points of the uh, 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 of nighttime. And with a telescope, you might or a pair uh, telescope, periscope, periscope. You one might be able to watch the sunset and find out exactly when sunset happens. Compare that to the clock and also use that for longitude. So there'll be some additional information coming out about how to do all that. With that, I'm going to wrap up this episode, get to do some sailing offline. And then uh, we'll also be taking a look at in various episodes how the different ships, different starter ships are handling um, in comparison to each other. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching my video and keeping up on the updates for Sailwind. If you're interested in this game, link in the description below where you can find it on Steam Early Access. This is definitely very early access and there are bugs. Um, so like be ready for that. And if you're interested in helping us develop or helping the developers improve the game, absolutely get involved in the early access and join the official Discord server, which we'll also have a link in the description below where you can ask questions. Community is really friendly, uh, plenty of help available, and we're all pulling together and pulling, pulling together and, and putting together resources, videos, tutorials, uh, naming stuff, which is just getting in the ground floor in the, in the game and being able to name stuff like, um, there's a star here. If I can't, it's not too late to find it. Yeah, this star right here that follows the sunset this is called Milniad, and it was named by the community, and it can be used with this and the uh, the now this and the um, and the chronometer. By the way, at precisely 1,900 hours, which is coming up in about a half an hour, right? So that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh no, we missed it by a half an hour. But you'd cite the star at exactly 1900 hours. Um, and there's a conversion chart to tell you how far east and west you've gone, how, what your latitude is, or I'm sorry, I always get those backwards. East and west is longitude. You can determine what your longitude is based on how many degrees above the horizon this star is at 1900. And now that we have a chronometer with a minute hand, it is really easy to be precise and know exactly when 1900 is as opposed to using a chrono compass which is pretty close but it's not this precise so with that i'll say until next time i'm sim gamer this has been sailwind and until the next episode may the winds be ever in your favor goodbye